The last thing I want to talk about in this course is user input being rendered into server-side templates. And as we'll see in a moment, that can be a very serious risk. In fact, it's probably the least understood and most potentially dangerous risk in AngularJS apps. Now, the AngularJS docs do talk about this, and we're looking now at the security page which I introduced towards the beginning of the course. The one that doesn't really have a lot of stuff in it. But what it does have is some information pointing out the dangers of the risk we're about to see. And what they talk about is Angular's sandboxing not being intended to stop attackers who can edit the template before it's processed by Angular. I'll show you what that means in just a moment. Firstly, let me draw your attention to the first bullet point. Do not mix client and server templates. And also the second one. Do not use user input to generate templates dynamically. Let's go and do both those things right now, just so we can see exactly what the risk is. OK, back on the Angular app. And we're now going to spend a bit of time on the search page. Let's jump over there now. Now, you may have noticed that when we loaded that search page, you could see the reload icon appear on the tab. What's actually happened here is I have loaded a brand new page. So remember earlier on, I talked about the more traditional web app model where upon navigation of a hyperlink, it would unload the entire page from the DOM, request the new one, and then load that up. That's what I've done here, and you'll see why in just a moment. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to enter a search term. Let's make it hello. And now we'll search. That's fine. No results found. We've still got hello in the search box, and you'll also see hello up in the URL passed as a search term parameter. This is a pretty common pattern, and it means that I could take this entire URL, pass it off to someone else, and they would have this context, the one that has hello in the search box. However, this app has really not used Angular in the way it should. It's actually made a GET request to the top of the browser window and effectively just unloaded the previous page and loaded the new page. Even though it's done this, we've actually still got Angular on the page. In fact, if we control U to look at the source code, jump to the bottom, we can still see all of our Angular scripts. So here's the thing. It looks like this page can be loaded with untrusted user data, so that's hello in the URL, and Angular is running on this page. Let's see what we can do with that. Close the source code, and let's actually go and enter a bit of Angular. Now let's try searching. And here we see a problem. We entered hello, and then 1 plus 2 within Angular's curly braces. The content within those braces was then parsed and executed by Angular. That's why we have a 3 here now. It's just 1 plus 2, obviously. Let us not lose the significance of this. I have just been able to get Angular to execute untrusted data reflected from the query string. What that means is that I can call into anything that Angular can access. So, for example, what happens if I try to log me out? Let's find out. We can see that I'm presently logged in. What will happen now if we search? 
and there we can see I have just been logged out. The page posted back, the Angular syntax rendered into the source code, Angular's running on the page, so it picked it up, executed it, and consequently logged me out. This really becomes an XSS attack, a reflected XSS attack, because I was able to pass code via the query string that was then executed. Now, for most frameworks, if I had have tried this with HTML markup, I would have had some native protection to ensure that it was correctly encoded for the output context. We saw Angular do that earlier on when we had that EM tag and the on mouse over attribute. Angular encoded that for us. And that's because Angular, as the client script, understands HTML and how it needs to be encoded. But that's not the case with this search page. This search page executed on the server and simply rendered the query string. It didn't understand that those braces would actually cause Angular to execute the contents. What all of that means is that I could now take this entire URL, start distributing it around the people that use this app, say via social media, and everyone who followed this link would be automatically logged out. Now that's not a particularly malicious attack, but you can see that once you have the ability to have Angular assess and execute that statement, you could potentially start to do some very nasty stuff. So this is what the Angular security documentation was saying earlier on. Do not mix client and server templates. This was just an entire page that was reloaded and happened to have Angular on it. But you also wouldn't want to pass user input to a template that was loaded into an ng view because you could have exactly the same risk. If that user data was passed as a parameter into the request for the template, you'd have the same problem. The security page also said, do not use user input to generate templates dynamically. But that is exactly what has happened. And if we now view the source code, we can see exactly where that happened. It's just down here. Here it is, rendered into the HTML. That is precisely what the Angular security page was warning us about. And the fix is really this simple. Don't render any untrusted data into the source code of anything that Angular can parse. Their docs say don't do it, and now you've seen why.